Okay, uh, this is the vlog for June 10th, 2018, which is roughly the first day of E3 2018. Did I just say 2006 or 2018? June, June 10th, 2018. Today is June 10th, 2018. My brain's all over the place because um, I just got finished watching the Bethesda E3 now. I'm not going to say that I was excited the whole time, uh, even though Skyrim is a game I've played more than just about any other, and it's in my top five. Uh, the only game I think I've played more, put more hours into, is probably World of Warcraft. Um, I love I love Skyrim, but Bethesda is not a company without sin. Um, let's be honest, their games are very buggy. Uh, they can have very odd... Um, sort of release issues where uh, features that you're looking forward to won't be available immediately. Um, they were the first people to come up with the very concept of paid DLC, and that paid DLC was horse armor. So obviously these guys have made mistakes. They're good at learning from their mistakes. Um, but I'm also not fond of all of their franchises, specifically the Fallout games. Fallout has never been a series that appealed to me nearly as much as the Elder Scrolls. <sighs> Which brings us to the major point. So a few days ago, last week, uh, Bethesda started teasing Fallout 76. They released a trailer showing uh, the game's engine in, in process uh, to give an idea of what it would feel like while you were playing it. But they didn't really explain what it was. It looked a lot like the last two Fallout games, Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. Um, it was definitely on the prettier side. Uh, and that's because it's running on a fairly new engine. Uh, engines don't generally get made from the ground up these days. They just get upgraded from the previous engine. So I'm assuming it's some form of the Gamebryo engine they've been using ever since uh, Oblivion or maybe even Morrowind. Actually, I think it was new for Oblivion, but they've been using a variant of Gamebryo for the last 12 years-ish. So, Fallout 76 is different. It is actually not a single-player story-driven RPG. It is a multiplayer survival co-op, but also PvP game. It's a survival game much in the vein of uh, Ark, or uh, I guess you could say Rust. Um, it has elements similar to Fortnite, um, but it is done very much in a Bethesda Fallout style. And that's cool. Uh, some of my friends are very interested, and some of my friends are very hesitant to get in, like, too invested in it. Because it sounds like all of their servers are going to be hosted by Bethesda, which means no private servers, which probably means no server controls, and also no modding. And I know a lot of my friends really only get into uh, Bethesda games because they are moddable, and lar that is largely due to the fact that most of them are single player. When you have mods in a game, you have to get every player uh, playing that game to agree to the mods, uh, and generally they only really work if the mods are applied to a server rather than hosted on an individual's computer, because if they're hosted on the computer, everybody is trying to grab them from that computer, which clogs up the communication, whatever, I don't know, Wi-Fi or wireless, or not wireless or Wi-Fi, I don't know internet stuff, I don't know LAN stuff very well, but I, I do have some level concept of the basics. Uh, so, I am hesitantly excited for Fallout 76. It does change one of the biggest problems I have with Fallout Universe is that the Fallout Universe is very ugly. It's dirt, it's rubble, it's ruin, it's broken things, it's just sort of nasty. And some people, that's what they really want, it's not what I want. What I want also isn't Starfield, which looks like their next sort of single-player franchise, and rather than being science fiction set in a post-apocalyptic Earth with the... Uh, what do you call it, diesel punk style, where retro sort of 50s and 60s um, uh, stylistic choices are incorporated into uh, a more modern setting. 
Starfield is basically a sort of Star Wars, Star Trek style space opera game with a massive single player campaign, which is something that Bethesda hasn't done before. It's possible that you will be able to travel between planets. Um, I'm sure there'll be laser guns and probably laser swords and maybe even uh, robots you can pilot and run around in. I'm sure there will be some sort of ground vehicle. Um, these games, though, have gotten a lot of mixed praise lately. I mean, you look at games like Mass Effect, especially Mass Effect Andromeda. Uh, you look at games like... Uh, there was another one I was just thinking of. But it, it's worrisome. It could be really good, but we'll have to wait and see. But Todd Howard is a bit of a troll, and he kept this press conference going for a well, half hour after he appeared, and it was only in the last 45 seconds that they finally revealed anything about what I was interested in, which was the Elder Scrolls VI, which is so far off, probably releasing in 2020, that it doesn't even have a subtitle yet. Classically, the subtitle of an Elder Scrolls game has described where it's located. The first game was called Elder Scrolls Arena, and it took place in the entirety of the continent of um, Tamriel. They, they made the scope smaller for the second game, which was called the Elder Scrolls Daggerfall, which takes place in the city of Daggerfall located in the kingdom of High Rock, but also allows you to travel to some uh, other locations including, I believe, Orsinium, which is the kingdom of the orcs, and maybe parts of High Rock, or no, excuse me, uh, Hammerfell, which is the homeland of the Redguard people. Uh, Elder Scrolls III Morrowind took place in Morrowind, which is the Dark Elf province. Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion took place in Oblivion, which is a different plane of existence, very similar to Hell, uh, but it also largely took place in the uh, province of Cyrodiil. And, of course, the most famous Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, takes place in the province of Skyrim. So, if they had given a name, a subtitle, we probably would have had some idea of where this new Elder Scrolls game was going to be located. But all we got was a very long shot of some misty plains, badlands, and mountains, and one very interesting-looking castle before the title drop, and that was it. I'm going to be watching that particular 45 seconds or whatever it was of footage over and over and over again to try and figure out where this is going to be. I want to be excited for this. And this is a tiny little vlog. I'm going to tag this with E3, Bethesda E3, Bethesda, Elder Scrolls 6, Fallout 76. I'm going to tag it with all these things. And people can come and see this one episode of my vlog and wonder if I talk about video games all the time or Bethesda games all the time. And I don't. But... I guess I'm just frustrated with the format in which uh, E3 tends to take place, you know. It used to be you'd learn about the E3 news reading uh, gaming magazines, so you would only, you know, read articles with a few photographs to find out what games were coming out. When the internet came out and people started posting trailers online, then you would just watch the video game trailers, and then when internet connection speeds improved dramatically, we started getting these live streams of the events, and I almost feel like it's doing the whole thing a disservice. If I could have just jumped directly to the stuff that I was interested in, instead of waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for maybe Word of Elder Scrolls Six, I think I would have been a lot better off. And if I just waited, instead of watching it live with my friends that I was talking to on Discord the whole time, I might have had a better time. But we were all joking with each other and talking about what we did like and what we didn't like. And I don't know if that's making the experience better or worse, but that's certainly what the developers want us to do, is they want this communication to happen because then we go on Twitter, say what we're thinking about, other people see what we're saying. And it's going to happen here with YouTube. People might find this video, and they might see what I'm saying, what I think, and then they're going to leave comments and other people will make videos and there'll be a reaction video to my reaction video. If this, I guess this technically, technically counts as a reaction video. <sighs> Sometimes you just want to watch a trailer and go, that was cool. I'm Eric Spornitz and tomorrow will be better.